Right. Good evening, all. Um, we have. Um, this is going to be very interactive. I'm looking for a lot of discussion today, um, as usual, of course. And the topic is all around communication. So, so thanks for joining us. Um, I'm looking forward to this because I really want to know what people out there are thinking. And communication is really interesting. I, I was doing some work for a client down in Trinidad, and we were bringing on, bringing on 14 different facilities. And after we did the first one, we thought we'd do our lessons learned, and we asked them, you know, what, what did we do well? And the answer was communication. And I said, Phew, thank goodness for that. And I said, what could we do better? The answer was communication. So no, no matter what we do, we could always do better at communicating. So what, what do you use to communicate? And I'm going to, I'm going to just put up a poll for a second, just to try and um, get the conversation going. How do you communicate? And if you can tick everything that applies in here, so if you, if you do them all, tick them all. Um, if you don't, just tick the ones you do. And if you tick other, I want you to put it in the, in the chat box what the other is. I'm hoping we get some others because I'm thinking, what would that be? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share a video clip after this. Um, and I'm, I'm going to challenge myself to see if I can actually make the sound work this time. And um, I failed significantly last time, so that wasn't very good. Um, yes, but then Christy benefited, didn't she, from your learning? You see, we've all benefited from your learning. <laughs> so we, there's still a few just sneaking in there. I'll let, I'll let it just go for a bit longer. And, and it's quite interesting, yeah, face to face, absolutely, and WhatsApp, um, Instagram, presentations. So WeChat. Mm. Not heard that one. So I'm just going to I'm going to stop it there for a second. I think a lot of people have got them in. We've got 33 back out of 41. Um, and I'm just going to share this. So e emails up there. Um, Everybody does email. 97% phone. Uh, Facebook's got a few there at uh, 22 out of us, out of the 35 respondents. Then the website. And the other is, is piling in and presentations. And there's five new ones on here. Uh, yeah, WhatsApp, Snapchat, Hatsap. Is this Jim Platter special? <laughs> Um, I'm going to stop, just stop, stop sharing that one a second. I'm going to play a video clip, um, if I can manage this. Um, share sound, here we go. So this was somebody going for a job interview, um, and it's a YouTube Amy, clip. it says you are trained in technology. That's very good. Are you adept at Excel? No. PowerPoint? No. Publisher. Not really. Exactly in what area of technology mm -hmm. are you proficient? <laughs> Snapchat, Pinterest, Instagram, Vine, Twitter, you know the big ones. I'm surprised you didn't say Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> That's for old people like my parents. <laughs> That's funny. Well, Amy, when you're working for me, you have to have those kind of research skills because I'll send you things for you to comb through and get the answers and send them to me. So for that, you've got to be really good at technology. For stuff like that, no problem. I'll just ask Siri. You'll just ask Siri? You know, Siri, tell me this. Siri, find me that. We're all good getting you the answers. Tell Siri I want you ready to go at 8 sharp each and every morning. I don't understand. What don't you understand? What you just said. You don't understand, be ready to go? No, you said 
eight, right? Yes. Eight, like, in the morning, eight? Yes, in the morning. Yeah. That kind of doesn't work for me. Who gets up at eight? I do. I Skype with my French boyfriend in Paris until like three in the morning. I don't even get to Starbucks until like 10 where I order my grande chai tea latte, three pumps, skim milk, light water, 2% foam, extra hot, but not too hot. So if it's okay, I work best in the morning at 10.45. <laughs> wow. Amy, I don't think we're gonna be a good fit. Why are you so negative? I can sense your hostilities, and right now I am not feeling very safe. I've been here for over five minutes, and the only nice thing you have said to me was nice resume, which I typed all night for this meeting with you. You've given me no guidance, no validation, no encouragement, no supervision. Is there an HR director somewhere? H HR director? Yes, I need to speak to someone. I may have to take off today as a mental health day. Take today off, you, Amy. Amy, look at me. You don't work here. Are you firing me? Okay, yes. Stop shooting that. <laughs> so how do you communicate? How do you communicate with, with the club duvet days? I like it. Is this, is, this after eight, is this after six in the morning, Heather? No, I learn about duvet days from my um, my millennials that work with me. Uh, yeah, well, I've learned loads of stuff, loads of stuff. So, so if you want to start sharing, uh, click on participants and raise your hand and uh, like give us some feedback on that. That was some really interesting communication in lots of different ways. Um, and I guess I missed a few on that list, didn't I? <laughs> After seeing that. Alana, were you the TikTok? <laughs> Actually, it wasn't. I wasn't the one that clicked TikTok. That, that wasn't me. Clear. That must have been clear. <laughs> She's only just worked out how to work it herself. Well, it's good to show off once you know. Sure, <laughs> she can hear me as well. I'll be in trouble. So, what what do you do in your club to to, to communicate, D Don Allen? Well, we use them. Um, we have uh, most things that we do on Facebook or by um, uh, mine's going blank, uh, or by um, sending emails to each other. Uh, we use Facebook a fair, a fair old bit, and but we have a couple of um, uh, WhatsApps that um, we can communicate as a smaller group or as a whole, a group in whole. That helps. Yeah, absolutely. But what do people think of the different communication methods that that young lady had um, versus, and, and I deliberately chose that link when some people think that Rotary is older men. Um, apart from that, it was quite a funny link anyway. So what, what do people think about the different pieces in there? Now you better put up your hand or I'll pick on somebody. Uh, Julian. Julian? Yeah. Julian's waiting to come in. Okay. Um, we've been using Facebook uh, emails a lot, but we're trying to attract younger members. And one of the things uh, we did was we actually asked a few younger people, certainly my nephews and nieces, about did they use Facebook? And they said just the same as that young lady, that's for the old folk. Uh, not for the youngsters. So for that reason, and also again talking to my nephew, uh, we've actually started an Inst Instagram account for the club with a view that we're looking to reach out to younger people. Okay. What, what, what do others do? I mean, that, that was a really interesting video clip for, for me um, as, as, I guess, one of the older generation. I, I, I enjoyed that. Uh, what do other people think? Um, Alana, tell me, what do you think of that video clip? Yeah, I'll mute myself. <laughs> so, um, sorry. I, well, that's, I don't think that really re reflects us well, but I'm not a millennial. 
I'm, I'm just before being a millennial. Um, but no, that's awful. Like that does not reflect young people well at all. Like, I don't know what they are all like, but I wasn't like that when I was younger. Um, and I'm still not like that. I know how to work things and I know how to use things. And as I seen somebody wrote in the comments, snowflakes. And that is totally true. Like that clip makes that person look like a snowflake, just like offended everything. Um, and I personally don't think that there's that many people that are like that. But um, I don't know. That's just what I've come across. I, I've not really dealt with people like that, or I didn't see myself like that at all. Like I know how to use technology and stuff, but I'm not like I'm actually probably not as up to date as that she is. I actually, I'm not as good on technology as people would assume for me being young and for my age. I know how to use my stuff, like my work stuff, and, um, and I know how to use Facebook and TikTok, but apart from that, I'm actually not as up to date as people would assume I would be. So what would you use for communication? I would use Facebook or WhatsApp. Okay. Um, it depends, because Facebook, like WhatsApp is, it would be what you would use to communicate just between people, but not to advertise, um, whereas Facebook is better for communicating with like larger groups of people I think and so that other people can see it as well um, but I quite like the idea of face to face obviously that's harder now being given the restrictions and stuff but um, I would, face to face is probably the best way to communicate with people I think but obviously that can of be all the time so my I would vote would be Facebook email and WhatsApp. Okay and, and be, between between your peers and people your age, what, what do you use? What do I use? Well, like if it's non sort of rotary and it's not like to advertise or anything like that, like Snapchat, um, people use and I'll use that now and again, and obviously TikTok. But again, TikTok's not really for communicating with people back and forward. That's more just for like a platform for expressing yourself basically like yeah. people will just post videos just to get other people to laugh um, it's not really where you would communicate with people you can um, it's just that's not what it's that's not what it's for it's not what it's main thing is it's not what it gains really it's more just to express yourself and show show off talents and make people laugh so people will say TikTok but it just depends on how you're looking at it. I wouldn't use TikTok to communicate with somebody. You're not you're you're not trying to buy TikTok, are you? Like Microsoft or someone today, I think I saw. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'll, Promise. I'll, I'll, Alistair Walker's want to put his hand up. He is somebody whose grandkids from thirteen to twenty eight in two weeks' time, uh, and the the older ones, you know, twenty, twenty two and twenty eight. Uh, most of what they do is on uh, WhatsApp, uh, Facebook or Snapchat and uh, that's how I communicate with them. I, I personally, I think these are a vehicle but in business, I, you know, I built up the, one of the largest surveying businesses in Aberdeen. It was all done face to face. You go progress from a business acquaintance to a friend to a good friend, and I felt that was far more important. But the young people today, that's how they prefer, as my grandkids prefer to do it online. I think it's a WhatsApp, Snapchat. They're the main, main ones they use. I think there's something about the wider issues as well, isn't there, about, it's the right medium, isn't it? Depending on what your message is and depending on who you're going to target. And, trying to target and I guess that comes back to you know being clear on your message but also knowing who you're trying to communicate with and what their preferences are I think it's just put turning it on its head because we could have our own personal preferences but that's not really the point is it it's who we're trying to get our message across to and how they're going to prefer to to hear it I guess and that's the challenge because I know sometimes clubs are are struggling to get somebody to kind of provide that sort of uh, communications and public relations type type support uh, uh, absolutely, Heather, and uh, I was just going to ask people about the, the, the vision, the 1010 vision, the first one was produced recently, um, and, and we had a meeting with the public image team after, they wanted feedback on it, and we've had lots of great feedback on it, we've also had lots of suggestions of how um, it's too long, um, some people prefer bite-sized chunks and put it on Facebook or something, 
or put it on the club pages. Um, but what, what, what's, what are people's views about district being able to put things like the vision, the 1010 vision onto, onto their Facebook or website or put a link? What, what, what are your views on that? Go and put, go and put up your hand, press, press participants and raise your hand and let's have a look at that. No, nobody's brave enough. Here we go, Don. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I, I agree that um, uh, that uh, that's the way forward. And uh, what I found was that by watching it uh, without being disturbed by being in a hall, you, you got a lot more from it. Yeah. Uh, where you, uh, when you were actually in a hall with other people, the distractions were too much. But I thought it was a better way to do it. Not the best, but a better way. Okay. Um, James Milton, how do you sound up, Ken? Who has? James Milton, Inverness. Go, go for it, James. Yeah, thanks very much. Um, just on an earlier point, I think Alana uh, more or less identified where our problem might be. And as much as um, when it comes to our normal club meetings, we don't get the number uh, to join Zoom. So I can't imagine that uh, there'll be m many members who can uh, go onto Instagram and WhatsApp and, and what other media uh, platforms there is. The, when I was president, the, the most common way I communicate was through email. Okay. And by that, I knew that every, every member got a copy of what uh, I was intending communicating. Now, I don't think if you were going to communicate through other uh, um, media, that would be the case. Now, going back to the, the, the Vision 1010, I don't know who um, is all receiving the 1010 um, book or, or the, the communication at the moment. Uh, and so it's hard to, hard to comment on, on its uh, viability. Yeah. From my personal point of view, uh, I think it's a it's a good method of uh, getting to know what the uh, district is district's intentions are. I don't know whether the uh, the the document is being circulated to all Rotary members within ten ten. Well, I like there's just the person put their hand up who can tell us. So Jennifer. can't hear you yet Jennifer. Sorry, uh, I have to declare an interest in this being on the PI committee. As I understood it, every Rotarian should get uh, Vision 1010. Whether they all read it is something else. The other issue I wanted to say was the uh, thing about new technology. Um, our club's average age is um, somewhere up there in the stratosphere. But we have Zoom meetings every week and we get 20 of our sort of 24 active members turning up at the Zoom meetings. I think it's a case of people are afraid of technology that they don't understand. And I'm sure if uh, we had some training sessions with our members, we could get them into WhatsApp um, and the other more modern techniques. Um, I would struggle because the grandchildren are just teaching me WhatsApp and I still don't quite know what I'm doing with it. But I think, you know, to get the, we're getting as, at least as many members on a Zoom meeting as we got at a face-to-face -face meeting. We do miss the meal and the, uh, the social side of it, but um, we catch up with everybody. Um, and it's really working surprisingly well from a, a very hesitant start. So th thank you for that, Jennifer. And J Jennifer and Peter Leyland and, and uh, John Holm um, and others in the public image team have done, I think, done a cracking job. Um, and we will look at splitting the thing up into bite-sized chunks. Um, we really would like clubs to give us permission to put it on their pages for them. 
um, or link to that. Uh, and the next one's due out next week. So just a, a, a plug, if you've got a good news story, um, now's the time to send it in to John Home, and we'll get that in, in the next uh, 1010 vision that's due out um, end of next week, I think, or there, thereabouts, 14th, um, it comes out. I, th I think the big m message here is that there's no one tool is the right tool. There's a multiple amount of tools, a m multiple ways of communicating to make sure your message gets across. Personally, and, and I know I annoy some people I do it, but I like to speak to people. Um, sometimes I'm not very good at the timing of it, and I just phone them up and say, um, this is in my mind, can we, have a, can we have a minute on it or whatever? What, what are other people's views on that? Go, go on. Liam? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we like to talk to people as well. Uh, but we're actually finding these Zoom meetings very good because it does enable us to talk to people. Sure. And certainly within our club, we're actually drawing in our members who are actually living abroad at the moment. So that's pretty good. And generally speaking, it's, it's a club of 45, but we get around 33 attending on Zoom meetings every week, which is pretty good. Uh -huh. uh, we've only had one objection in the club, and that was one member said he didn't join the club to have zoom meetings um but that's just one member okay okay thank you for that i think robin had his hand up okay robin Warto. go for it you're still muted robin robin still muted Um, the spoken word and uh, talking to each other, I think, is very important. Although the other mediums are good too. Yeah, uh, it's more personal, isn't it? It is. How do you find Ken? I, I, I certainly do. Um, and I, in, in business, a lot of people I. I in, in, in the office I was in, used to send emails to one another. <laughs> and, and they were within within striking distance of one another. And I used to really get annoyed saying, go and speak to people. I'm, I'm going to ask Heather. Heather just sent me an interesting thing on um, non-verbal communication. Heather, have you got that that you could put up on the screen? Well, see, now you're just trying to put me on the spot for testing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Wait a minute. I'll have a wee look. You carry on. I, I just sent you just now, didn't I? You did. I, I thought it, I thought it really interesting. Um, I've got a few like that. If you give me a couple of minutes, I'll pop them up. Okay. I'll tell you when I'm ready. Donald Hitchin, while well, Heather's looking for that. Hi. Um. Good evening, everyone. Uh, one of the things that um we have benefited from in, in Zoom uh, is an increase in regular attendance at our meetings, uh, which was a bit of a surprise because we have a, quite a, an old group as well as a, a young and upcoming group. Um, but one of the real benefits is that um, one of our members moved south down to uh, Gloucester area this year and find herself somewhat isolated um, and unable to find a Rotary club down there. So she was able to actually join our meetings on a weekly basis, which has been very nice way of mm -hmm. having continuity until she finds a, a local club down there. Um, so that's a great thing. Um, what, what obviously we miss out in the Zoom is that one-to-one face-to-face -to -face banter and you, you can't always pick up uh, those sort of signals when you're not on a one-on-one -on -one basis so there's a trade-off there and um, combining the two and meeting up as individuals is equally as important um, so just my tuppence worth for the evening um so thanks thanks ken for all the the good work you're doing by the way cheers thank you uh, thanks for that heather do, do you want to talk to it 
Yeah, I just, I've just always find this really interesting, um, you know, in terms of remembering it, because the reason that I use this a lot um, at work is to get the kind of the email champs thinking about, you know, how important it is not to do every bit of communication um, in black and white in writing. And also um, on email, and apart from the fact that email can be really dangerous, because if you look at that 38% tone of voice, have you ever fallen out with somebody on email and they say, that's not exactly what I meant? You know, so tone of voice, I think, is a really good reminder about why email in particular or where we're being more informal with our kind of written word can be dangerous. But I guess you know, what's coming through tonight is what we all know, isn't it? Which is, which is the kind of non-verbal, how important the non-verbal is. And that's the whole thing, isn't it? About facial expression, you know, eye contact, body language. Are you leaning in towards somebody? in an aggressive way, in an engaging way, you know, what are you doing with your arms? Are you looking interested? Are you looking disinterested? So, you know, it's, it's just the way that we like to deal with each other as, as human beings, isn't it? And I, I think as well that that's possibly why, although it might not have been our first choice, people are enjoying Zoom to an extent because, okay, we can't, we can't meet face to face, but you do get at least a sense of whether somebody's smiling or looking engaged or looking at the screen and so on. So I just think it's good to remember, you know, that that split of things because the non-verbal over half, I mean, that's that's pretty incredible when you think about it. Absolutely. And I, I, I couldn't agree more on that. And it was just so, so interesting when I saw that coming through. And that's why I like speaking face to face with people. Um, one thing I detest is email ping pong because you're quite right you, you you don't understand the tone of what people are really thinking and the way they've written their words or whatever um Al alistair walker had his hand up next the the thing about the one of the things that's come through in our club is the number of people who said they miss the side conversations that go on over lunch uh -huh. and the asides to it my concern about emails is that it would be that people often say things in emails that they often regret later. It becomes a, a vehicle to say something when you don't have to face somebody. Uh, but I much prefer the, as I say, these side conversations, the chit chat. Whereas in Zoom, of course, it's basically, in, you know, back and forth on the one subject. You don't get that feeling, that atmosphere you get in a meeting with a lot of people. And you don't get the chance to develop friendships to the same extent. Yeah. And, 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 and very much so. And, you know, if, if I'm writing an, an email that's got a lot of detail in it, I'll write it and I'll actually put it down for about four hours and come back to it to make sure it still reads as I intended it to. Um, and it often doesn't. And, and it could have caused a lot of trouble if you had just gone and said send and not checked it. it, it Email and other things, you've got to be really good. I think it was, I think it was Winston Churchill said something like, you know, if you want me to give you a 10 minute talk, um, I, um, I, I'll need three weeks to prepare. If you want a half hour talk, I'll do it tomorrow. Um, so being able to give very concise messages is so important. And that's what really intrigues me with Twitter when you've got 140 characters to play with. Um, and how on earth you can get a real thing into that. I'm not convinced Donald Trump does. S Sand <laughs> Sandy and Turriff, you, you've got your hand up next. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that uh, Turriff is quite representative of most of the clubs in our district. Um, we're quite um, elderly or mature, shall I say. Uh, we're not very good with the technology. Some of our members uh, just don't have the technology. Well, gee, they don't even have a smartphone. Uh, there's only one member that doesn't have email. That's something. Everyone else has got email. But again, we, we also favour the face-to-face the -face club meetings where we can discuss things rather than just be told things. But we also find that if we've got a work squad that's going out to do some community work, a little phone call around the squad the night before makes a hell of a difference just to have a chat about what they might bring and who might bring what and who takes what vehicles. Um, it is, it's much friendlier, it's much nicer. We've tried to get Facebook uh, up, and, up and running and 
some of our members are not on it and they refuse to be on it. They're pretty sure it's spying on them. So we can't get that working. We've tried WhatsApp, again, without smartphones, that doesn't work. It's, uh, it's, it's very difficult in this modern age with old fashioned people, just very difficult. Absolutely. People are sending me texts and they're going in the chat and it's really interesting. Emails can be dangerous. You tend to lose your formality and thoughtfulness in emails. It's a fine means of setting up meetings, but for substantive purposes, you have to be much more careful of what you're doing and you can't use it for a medium of entertainment in the office. And if somebody said in the chat, See, once you've pressed send and you find you've sent it to the wrong person. Um, my boss used to do that um, in, in the company I was with. There was a couple of Kens um, and I quite often got one for the for other Ken who happened to be the finance director of the company. And they used to, used to punt it back to the boss and said, um, I think this is for other Ken. Um, but I guess what are people doing um, thanks, Heather. Brilliant. That's the one I was looking for. Uh, so what are people doing to help their older members use some of this technology? In my own club, we did quite a bit about helping them with Zoom and helping them so they could log in and spent a lot of time on the phone, which is really interesting when they uh, when you're trying to explain something, which button to press and you find they've got an iPad instead of a laptop, instead of a, an iPhone or whatever. Um, Gary or Eleanor? Yes, Ken, I was just trying to hopefully follow on something that Heather had been saying about communication and I was taking out a slide that I used to use such a long time ago that RI present was actually Japanese and that actually puts the date on it and that is that for all the stuff that we're sharing and this has been proven empirically the headline is worth 100% the opening sentence 60% the picture 95% and the content 5% yeah. so in terms of anything and this is trying to build upon what Heather was saying a wee while ago anything we're trying to build upon that I always suggest to people half the text double the photographs and then go and do that again. Yeah, and, and that, that's really interesting because one, one of the comments we got back when we were doing the district health check was, you guys don't cater for dyslexics. And, and that's a really interesting statement. So we actually went to Dyslexia Scotland and asked them, um, go, go and give us some help. And, and they were excellent. The, the bad news is, I've been very bad at not sharing it with the clubs. I did share it with the, with the district team um, on presentations, just about simple things. Don't use a white background. Go and, go and use a pale yellow or pale blue background. Don't use serif fonts like um, Times New Roman. Go and use simple fonts like Arial or Calibri. Um, and only have four bullet points on the slide. Don't make me read lots of different things. And speak slowly, which I'm extremely um, guilty of not doing. Um, so uh, that, that is really interesting on, on communicating with people in your own clubs who they, they won't admit if they're dys dyslexic, um, but it does cause a problem. Someone else had their, their hand up, was it Ray? Ray Valenti. Sorry, that was earlier on. But uh, yes, I totally agree. The use of emails just about destroyed their club last year because instead of just replying to one person, there was quite a few that replied to all, and that can cause all sorts of problems. I quite agree that if you speak to someone face to face or even on a telephone, far better. I'm one of the older generation, of course. So WhatsApp has been very, very useful for us as well. Yeah. And, 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 and you're absolutely right. One, one of the ways to stop people replying all is when you send them an email, just put everybody's name in the, in the blind copy, the BCC bit, and just send it to yourself. Then they can't reply all. Um, and it's what we should do with the GDPR things, of course, um, in, in terms of the, the data protection regulations. John, John from Pitlochry. <clears throat> Thanks, Ken. Um, 
just two points on email. Um, first one is, uh, I think it's a good idea to always, well, Ken, you were saying you maybe go away for four hours and come back. I think that's a great idea. Or even overnight, because you've written it and you think you've written good stuff, but you might think differently the next day. So I think that's really important. The other thing is to always read over your email and check you're not saying something that's going to offend somebody or be hurtful, always try and be pleasant. Uh, so it, even if you send it to the wrong person, it's not going to cause offence. Um, and I find that's really important as well. It's not, these are not things I always did, but I've just kind of gradually learning. The other thing I've, I've wondered about and what other people think is when you receive an email from particularly a kind of social thing like another Rotarian, um, what do you do with that email? If say that Rotarian is volunteering to help with something and you don't need them, you don't need any more volunteers. So what do you do? Do you just ignore it? I find that does happen. Or do you reply just briefly? Because I find this thing of ignoring an email that you've sent does tend to be a bit offensive. And I nowadays always try and not do that. But I wonder what other people do when they receive an email. Thanks. Thank you. And Heather's going to put up a little bit on email etiquette on the screen and shared it. Um, I know, but look at it. I think it's quite interesting because look at the second one. It, it's just a really good challenge, you know, because reply to all is really, really dangerous. So, but I guess this is the challenge is so is not reply to all because then, you know, it's kind of who hasn't heard about things. But I think, to be honest, what we're concluding tonight is email is not the best way and it's certainly not the only way to keep everybody in the loop of what's going on, is it? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, I, 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 I do think that we often rely too much on, on email for communication. I mean, there is quite a lot. In the so thanks very much for that, Heather. We've talked a lot about communication, miscommunication, nonverbal communication. Have a look at this video clip and just see some of the nonverbal communication that goes on if you don't get things right. And enjoy the video clip anyway. Thank you. Four candles. Four candles. Here you are. Four candles. No, four candles. Well, there you are, four candles. No, four candles. <laughs> candles for forks. Got any plugs? Plugs? Yeah. Pl what kind of plugs? A rubber one, bathroom. <laughs> what size? 13 amp. Tips. Saw tips. <laughs> what do you want, ointment or something like that? <laughs> yeah, 
Oh, <laughs> saw tips, but covering the saws. Tips. Ah, hose. No, we haven't got any. Haven't got oh. Covering them, but we haven't got any. Got any hose? Hose? Hose. hose. <laughs> No O's. O's? I thought you meant O's. 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 Say O's, you think you say that? No, O's. <laughs> o's? What a... O... You mean pantyos. Pantyos. No, no, O's. O's. O's for the gate. Mon repose. O's. <laughs> Letter O's. for your feet, brown pump size nine. You are having me on. You no, are definitely no, having no. me on. Washers. What? Windscreen washers, car washers, dishwashers, floor washers, back scrubbers, lavatory cleaners, floor washers. Half inch washers. Oh, yeah. Tap washers, tap washers. Yeah. Look, I've had about enough of this. Give us that dish. Make it all myself down here. What's this? What's that? Oh, that does it. That does have it. I've had just about enough of this. Mr. Jones, you come out and serve this customer, please. I've just about had enough of this. Look what it's got on there. Look what it's got on there. Right. And who would you like? One or two? <laughs> oh. So I hope you all enjoyed that clip and managed to see some of the non-verbal communication in there. That just about brings us to an end. We promised a lot less than an hour. Um, we're back on again next week, same time, using the new link. Thank you all very much for coming along tonight and we look forward to seeing you all next week. Thank you.